We wrote an article that went viral and sparked a natural hair revolution. We are Elise and Aisha, moms to small humans, digital content creators, licensed hairstylists, brand agnostic, curl educators, and generally your snarky girlfriends with no filter. We're two women from the south side of Chicago taking the stupid out of natural hair. On this episode of Curls Disrupted, we're going to talk about who is the natural hair client? Do you know her? Like, what does she like? Where does she shop? How much does she make? What products does she buy? How long has she been natural? And who influences her? Where does she work? <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, where does she work? Like, where does she work? This is important, like, to know these things about her. So I'll tell you the first time I actually heard Elise break this whole thing down in a class. Because that was a first class? Time. It was a class where okay. I heard you break it down for the first time. And I was like, every single thing she said, I'm like, yeah. yeah. I, like, I checked off every single thing. So because Elise has done this for as long as she has done it, right? And she has spent the time, like, she took time off her schedule. It was like, I'm going to immerse myself into all this, like, curly hair stuff with the black girls. It took a whole month off, right? Whole month. Whole month. She's dedicated time. She's gone through the products and the aisles. Like, I, I have to say this because I don't think people know this about you. Okay. You literally went through all the products in the aisle. Not now, but, no. like, before the aisle got expansive. So, about 2012. <laughs> right. I went through, because I was using a product line... And it was starting to not work for my clients. Actually, it never really worked for my clients, but it, it you was... You just made it do what it, it do. It was passable. You made it do what it do. And so I was like, okay, what else is out there for this natural hair market? And I went and bought, and then went to all the events and got all the goodie bags for everything that was out on the market. And I was the guinea pig. I tested out. That's how I learned that certain curl smoothie ain't ish. Oh, it's a curl smoothie. It's a curl, curl smoothie that everybody wants to use. And I'm it like, what are you using this make for? curls. It it's... smells horrendous too. Eh. Yeah. So I tested out everything out of myself and figured out what was working, how it was working, um, and what results you got from it. Uh, so I would be able to bring that back to my natural hair client. So when I, I was looking at who was coming to my salon, now at this time, if you're familiar with Chicago, I owned a salon on 79th and Coles. On the nine. On the nine. You have to know about the nine. Just so the nine. So <laughs> let's just say that some of the, a good part of the bad stories that you hear coming out of Chicago happened not that far away from, from the where nine. the salon was. Um, <laughs> And if any further notice, of, there was a bullet that went through my window oh, wow. when I was there. Ooh. Nobody was at the salon. It was fine. Uh, but people were coming and seeing us. At that time, I had two employees, Silas, and people were just driving up in their Volvos and their Mercedes and their BMWs. And I had to just stop and say, who is this client that is sitting in my chair? And she was anywhere from 25 to 55. She made over $50,000 a year. She was a professional. She was a teacher, a social worker, lawyer, doctor, medical doctor, I mean, entrepreneur, and artist. She shopped at the regular stores, you know, most middle class girls shop at. We're at the Gap, we're at Ann Taylor, we're, we're loving the J. Crew, because y'all. J. Crew fits my little waist and my big booty, surprisingly. <laughs> it's made for mom bodies. Uh, and she was concerned about how she looked. She wanted to be natural. But she was concerned about keeping her professional position and her professional demeanor while embracing all the parts of herself and her beauty. Yeah, so just imagine you, you hear this. You're like, okay, yeah, that's cute, right? And you start to see the clients that are coming to the salon who are sitting in your chair, and they fit this profile to a T. When I started to see that, um, I started to see these clients. They're pulling up in these vehicles. <laughs> they're carrying these purses. Um, they care about fashion. They care about how they look. Um, they are at the like at the realm of everything that is happening at the pulse and beat of everything that's happening with fashion. 
uh, with lifestyle, with you know the e natural hair community. They know everything. They know the new product launch that just everything, happened. Everything, everything. I saw it, and I was like, it became so clear, and I was like, I wonder how many people really know because they everybody seems to think. And I'm gonna tell this story real quick. When I was in cosmetology school, and everybody was like, oh, well, what are you gonna do when you leave cosmetology school? And I was like, oh, I'm just gonna do natural hair. So they're like, you're not gonna do weaves. And it's like, no sew-ins? And I was like, yeah, I'm not going to do sew-ins. They don't really inspire me. It's like, you're not going to make any money. And I'm like... And let's talk about, this is two years ago. Two years. And these are what the cosmetologists coming up were learning from their instructors that there was A, no money in natural hair, and B, no one actually wants to wear their hair like that. That was a big thing. Nobody wants to wear that jerry curl look is what I was told by one of my teachers. And I was like, but I show up to school. Every day. Every day with this big ass hair. And y'all still, okay, fine. I'm not here to convince anybody. You check, just check my Facebook, Instagram later. That's all I can tell you. So, because Aisha's been an influencer <laughs> since before all of this. She had, she had the five figure followers on I her did. account. You, she was, she it was, didn't the, even, I she was, was a blogger influencer. So, it's like when you have your ear to the ground of what the consumer is doing. You know what services you want to be offering. You know who they are. And you know what appeals to them. And you're not afraid to do it. I think exactly. that's a big thing of people being afraid to do things that don't seem, I guess, or that seem out of the box. Or don't vibe with what the professional industry tells you is appropriate. So yeah. we wrote a book named Wash Your Damn Hair. Yes. And it's very interesting that sometimes the only critique another professional can give us is that, well, we are stylists. We don't wash hair. We shampoo hair. And I'm like, that's great. I know that's that. I've been a cosmetologist fine. for 13 years. That's great. I'm glad you're like using your professional lingo. But let's be realistic. This is why we are out of touch with what's actually happening when it comes to consumers, and then you can't have a conversation with them about, you want to meet them where they are and then introduce them to shampooing. They are washing right now. Let them wash. Let them wash. Let's Let speak, them wash. Speak their language so that we can all be speaking the same language and your consultations will go better. Yeah, I mean, and they wash and go. It's okay. It's a wash and go. It's, it's okay. a wash and go. It's a hydrating dividing salon because now I charge $85 <laughs> for that service. But... Don't get so like... So I'm a professional. Get into that space of I know better. Because to be honest, there we were, we're actually just having this conversation right now as of September 2019 on our Instagram about the fact that there's so many consumers that will go to the salon and get their natural haircut in its natural state. And the stylist is unable to deliver a style to them that is acceptable for them walking out and being in this world. And oftentimes, these are not people who just have hair that is in need of so much repair Absolutely. that you can only do what you can do. These right. are folks that could go home and with the same products that you have in the salon, they're jamming on that hair. They're getting the longevity they're seeking and they're getting the look that they want to present to the world in their natural hair. Listen, if your client doesn't get out of her chair and wants to go in the bathroom, put on her earrings, put on her lipstick, come over to your, because y'all know y'all got those cute little lights in y'all salon. Go under those lights and take that picture. You didn't do something right. I'm telling you. It's, 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 it's evident. It's, it's, it's evident and apparent. Like, they disappear. <laughs> like, right? You're like, okay, girl. And they're like, yes. And, and then they, they disappear. And they even come before back they pay. fancy. Even before they pay you. They come back with their <laughs> credit card like, yes. Um, and and you, they, you can't keep them out of the mirror. There's a certain attitude. There's a certain neck swing. There's you, a certain hand movement. If you don't get that, if you don't get that, I'm telling you, that styling did not do it, it for the... It didn't hit. It didn't hit. That styling was not lit. If the styling didn't hit, that means they cannot see the cut you just did. They can't. They can't see it. They can't see the vision. They can't see where it's going. They don't know if they're going to come back. And oftentimes, it's a grumble, grumble. I just paid X, Y, and Z dollars, and my cuts, my cut's good. That's the exact tone of voice they're using. My cut's good, but 
I had to go home and restyle, and I just paid $150, $175, $250, and I didn't feel good yeah, when my, I left. My hair only lasted... A day. If that. I mean, so that's just not the norm. That's not acceptable. That's not what she wants. She doesn't want to do her hair every th three days. Because there's a, there's a school of thought. Of like, oh, you have to, like, you know, co-wash every... Listen, I'm working with mothers. Some of my mom clients have, like, three and four kids. And they got all other the people's hair. hairs to deal with. Right? <laughs> they don't have time to be, like, spending all this time doing their own hair. They need something that actually works with their lifestyle. That's why we're really big on, like, lifestyle Ooh. with our clients. Like, knowing exactly when and where, how this is going to work for the life that they live. So let's understand it. Because I think when we go into it and we say that, we don't ever really explain what that means. Mm -hmm. So what does it mean to be a black woman who has to do her hair every three days? So let's, let's say for, for wash, even when we make it wash hour for us, I've got to get up 30 to 45 minutes earlier. I'm a mom of a two and a half year old. Um, I also have a, a, an older person in my home with dementia. And I would, that would mean I would have to get up 30 to 45 minutes earlier than my regular day, take my regular shower, shampoo condition, style my hair, deal with wet shoulder length hair as I'm preparing breakfasts, preparing lunches, um, doing drop off, coming back, running a business. I don't have time to sit under my hood dryer. So that means I am air drying and my hair is poofing as we speak. Um, then I have to go into the world with this wild and crazy hair, which is great. I love my wild hair, but I'm not trying to have wild hair on day one because I like right. to progress through the looks. And I can't imagine being a mom, like having the life I have at home and then working a corporate job where I have to show up at a specific time, which could be anywhere between 8 and 9 a.m. I have to work with people who don't look like me nor understand my beauty rituals. And then I have to have my voice questioned because the fact that I could, I could be perceived where I am as the affirmative action hire <laughs> and the person who doesn't know what they're talking about because I'm a black woman, then I have to go home and mom and parents and wife and all the other titles that I have again and then be fooling around with it every three days. Listen. For most people. Now, some people can do that and it's fine if you're that person. Don't fight us. Because yeah. we get it. You might have that life. We you, don't. I, I do not. I have a five-year-old. And you're a solo mom. I'm a solo I mean, mom. I'm Married, so I have another adult in my house to, to help with things. No, I am dealing with a person who is totally unreasonable. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> dealing am. with a... Yeah, they're unreasonable. They're, people under five are unreasonable. Or people five over and under, five are unreasonable. Actually, 10 and under. <laughs> <laughs> they're unreasonable. Um, I'm having to cart my, my child to school every day. I have to get up every day, take him to school, drop him off. I'm trying to work out every day. Well, not every day, but every other day. I have to cook. I have to get the groceries. Oh, guess what? I operate a couple businesses. A couple. <laughs> and so I, you know, I'm responsible for our social media. We have to have chats about things that we're doing because I can't just be like, oh, I'm going to just do this. We're on FaceTime every day for at least an hour. Right. So we have to do that. And then on top of that, I have to wash clothes. I got to clean my house. Clean the house. <laughs> I'm looking for somebody to clean my house as we speak. But because <laughs> I cannot do all the things. And so I have been... Probably for like the last two months. I don't know when was the last time I actually sat under the dryer. Mm -hmm. Like I have been air drying for about two months now because I don't have time. So for me to tell some woman who has the same or similar experiences as who me. Who got more kids than I do. Mo who kids, has more girls than I do. Because I have one child with a ton of hair. Right. I can't imagine having three And I just got a boy. The I amount of hair my child has. I just got a boy and we cut his hair. So <laughs> we don't have those issues. But I couldn't imagine either. So I have to be able to, or we have to be able to, actually come mm -hmm. up with, with routines that fit the lifestyle of these clients. So when we say, like, we know the experience, we know the experience, and we really take that to heart when we're actually crafting routines and rituals for our clients. These are individualistic routines. They're not like everybody gets this assembly line routine. It's like, oh, you swim? 
Okay, because you swim. Or, oh, you work out three mm-hmm. days a week. Okay, because you work out three days a week. Or you work as a, in a dirty job. I mean, both of us have clients who are crime scene investigators. Right. They've got to do their hair more often just because of where they're working. So when we're able to cater to our clients' lifestyles and we get to know who that client is, what demographic they fit in, how they want to show up in the world, that's so very helpful in building trust with that client, that we understand who they are, we understand what they need, and we're able to tailor our services and what we recommend specifically to them, getting them the best results so that our work still looks good two months later because they're not doing the salon for another four weeks and they still look good and they still feel good. So as, as curl artists, it's so very important to understand who your client is And not just for what you're about to do for them right then, but what how what kind of impact you're about to have on their entire lives. I mean the whole life. Um, Because you see the life cycle when the clients are regular and they come back and come back. In fact, I can use Heather yesterday, who just came back. She was this is her second visit. Her hair was fabulous. (laughs) <laughs> Let me tell y'all something else about these natural clients. Heather hit me with Amex yesterday, and I go, oh, you're using your Amex? That's cool. She goes, it's the heavy one. Yeah. <laughs> she was like, you didn't notice it was the heavy <laughs> one, right? I love Heather. I, I love Heather, right? But I want y'all to know that they're car carrying Amex folks. So let's also, and then, <laughs> when you say that, I know we're, this is kind of a, a diversion. Right. But when stylists, like, I don't take credit cards. When you know who your demographic is and your demographic are the people who carry that good Amex card. The heavy one. Your system (laughs) better go ahead and swipe that because that's a particular type of client. The client that has access to that type of credit card, that type of limit, and that type of lifestyle. Listen. And when we want to say we're, we're trying to figure out where our clients are, where they're from, what they're doing... You want to make sure that if that's the type of client you're attracting, that you are able to do the things they want to do. Because they want those Amex points. That's Because Amex might not be as great for us and on the business side. They're amazing for the consumer side. And what we are is consumer facing. Absolutely. We are doing the things. We are service professionals. We're not servants, but we're service professionals. And we want to make sure that we're able to accommodate the guests that we do have. So, because you said she's like, it's the heavy one. She no, she literally was. I was like, like, it's the heavy I was one. like, I was like, oh, so you, oh, you're gonna use your Amex today? She was like, yeah, it's the heavy one. <laughs> Did you notice it was the heavy one? Because I was not, like, okay. <laughs> because not everybody takes it. So this is the thing that differentiates you as a service provider. So knowing who your client is, being able to service them in the way they're looking to be serviced, and then being able to take payment in the way they're looking to take it. That is being in tune and having your ear to the ground. With who your consumer is absolutely knowing that that natural client is not who you thought she was she is who she is and you need to get to know her <laughs> <laughs>